Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our YouTube channel. Our church actually celebrated harvest this last Sunday, and it was very strange and sad in one way that we wouldn't, we didn't do what we would normally do, which is uh, fill the church with various canned goods, fruits and vegetables, and then distribute them to people in need. Uh, we were not able to do that in the usual way. Uh, we did, however, still keep a donation box uh, somewhere in the church just to make sure that we were that we do still continue to distribute food. But um, it was a very sort of a strange feeling to see how it was very different. Uh, I just want to read a scripture while we're on that note of harvest. Um, th this comes from Matthew 9, starting at verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers, workers into the harvest field. And in the next section in chapter 10, we read about Jesus sending out the 12 apostles. Of course, the overall message of Harvest, I think, is that uh, we give God thanks for the way he blesses us in the land by giving us food and uh, water to drink. And although we do our part in, um, grow, uh, in planting the seeds and uh, gathering in the harvest, the whole overall message is to give God thanks for how he blesses us. But there is an element that we do indeed need to do our part, and there is a sense that the work is huge and there is a lot to do, and that actually Jesus is telling us in this passage that although the work is great and there is so much to do, there is actual there's actually not many workers. Um, you know, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Now. This might not be an obvious connection to the Bible, but it is something that kind of reminded me of this message in that if we think back to the early days of the pandemic in March, there was a great danger that our NHS would be overwhelmed. And it does seem that there may have been a sense that um, there was strain and struggle. Uh, I seem to remember the government asking doctors and nurses who were retired to if they were able to come back and help out in any way because the the need was so great. And we can sort of apply that as an example, I think, that the work was great and huge in these hospitals when so many cases were coming in and the workers were few. But praise God, you know, as the numbers were coming down in the pandemic, the work wasn't as huge and as a strain and uh, we were able to control the virus and control the number of cases. Now sadly we're seeing in the world that the peak um, is coming back and that we are headed towards the second spike. We saw that the Prime Minister gave an update last night in which he said these new regulations and this continual rise could go on for six months and um, I think um, that's a message for us now to know that in the next six months the work is going to be huge and there could be a lot of people getting overwhelmed and there may be a sense of strain. But I think the message for us here is the workers may be few and so the important message for us here is for, to make sure that we all do our part in helping to control the virus and to not let it spread between households. When we go out, we socially distance, we wear masks, we wash our hands. Um, the workers could be few if we don't end up doing our part. So that's really the importance of this message, is that we need to do the right thing in all circumstances. This would also apply in the exact same way in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, that there are the workers are few, and uh, we need more teachers and more preachers and more people witnessing about Jesus in their everyday life. Uh, so that too is what this uh, passage is talking about, that uh, we take Christ with us into the world. Now, I also said that the harvest is about the Lord blessing us. You know, yes, it is going to be a difficult six months, especially with winter coming and um, the seasonal flu may 
make the situation worse with the coronavirus. But even then, we can give thanks to God for the way that he is going to guide us, protect us, and comfort us in that time. I believe that he is going to guide our scientists in finding the right medication, the right remedies, and the, vac the vaccine that will hopefully come. It, it will be a difficult period, but uh, I really appreciated what the Prime Minister said, that spring, next spring, could be very hopeful. And, you know, harvest begins in this, the spring of the year, so who knows what this new harvest will bring. Uh, you know, there may be a wonderful sense that we could be free from this virus because of the modern technology and the modern science that could save us from it. We know the virus is not going to go away, but in all things, we can give thanks to God for how he is protecting us and guiding our doctors in this time. So that's my little message for you today. May you be encouraged during this Harvest Festival. Please don't lose the hope that there is in Christ because things are very different right now and we can't do the things that we would normally do. But may this encourage you. Uh, let's spend some time in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we think about what might be a rough road ahead in the next six months, we look to you and as we uh, walk along this path, we ask for your protection and guidance. And although it may be a dark period, we look for you for all our source of hope. And please guide our government and all the tough decisions they have to make and our doctors for the development of a vaccine. Be with all the family members who are mourning at this time and are suffering. For those with coronavirus, please heal them. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.